Let me pray for us as we begin this morning. <clears throat> Father, thank you for the word that has been read, the songs that have been sung, and even the one that we just finished with. Help us to find rest. May those words be true in our life, even in the most difficult of circumstances. That you are of God of great peace. And so this morning, I ask that you come and that you will speak by your word to each one of us. That you would encourage us, strengthen us, grow us, press in on us, touch the places that need to be touched, that need to be aroused to change. Help us to love you more and more that we do see your glorious face, that our relationship is so sweet. Pray for those who aren't here, that for whatever reason that you would be with them, be with Pastor Rush and his family as they are on vacation and give them good rest. We just commit this time to you. Thank you for the worship that we've always, already enjoyed together, that it may continue. And that even through this rest of this whole day is a day that we set aside as the Lord's day. That we would make much of it. And that our lives would continue on and be full of worship towards you. We love you. Thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you for saving us, setting your affection and your love on us. We are amazed. Amazing grace. We're grateful for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So this morning, we're beginning what we would, we're, we're a topical series. We preach verse by verse, book by book, um, here at, at our church. And twice a year, we take a break and take a topic and still preach through the scriptures around the topic. And so, um, this is the beginning of this. This will be a very different sermon than what you're used to. Your notes will come from your own personal stirrings of the Lord. And you'll have community group questions, so there'll, there'll, there'll be things that we can do. But it's going to be a little different. So anyway, it, this four-week series that we're beginning today is Overcoming Anxiety and Fear series. So, in this morning message this morning, um, I will cover three kind of sections in this message. One pastor's struggle, the word of encouragement, and a challenge for change. One pastor's struggle is, is my struggle. Part of this series came about from our men's summit that happened in April, April 19th to be exact, Friday night. And the men of the church gathered here in this room and we're talking about anxiety. And we opened up so that the man could share anxiety, worries, fears. And I was astounded that man after man after man after man after man were sharing great struggles with anxiety, panic attacks, struggles eventually we had to literally just shut it off so that we could at least try to come back and <laughs> I think take the scriptures and add a word of encouragement but for me it was very overwhelming it actually reached a point to where I felt like this is depressing It, it landed heavy.
There's a part of me I'm going, what have we been doing for the last 10 years? I think I'm in pretty good touch with a lot of people within our church. This one set me back. Then I started thinking, God, this is going on in the men's lives. What's happening in the ladies' lives? I may be wrong. Don't take this any wrong way, but I think there's more of a propensity for ladies to struggle with their emotions and anxiety and worry. I think the Lord equipped the men to be leaders, be able to handle things differently. You are the leader of your home. You do this together. But I thought, man, if this is happening in the men's lives and it's also happening in the ladies' lives, So for the next four weeks, we're going to talk about anxiety. <laughs> I probably pressed that a little more, or at least brought it forward to the other pastors, like, what are you going to do? Because I, I, I want to fix this. This is what men do. Don't you know? Yep. So we can move on. Just do this, and you'll be fine. I know that in four weeks, we're not going to fix it. For me this morning, here's my, here's my struggle. I don't want to say anything that would come across as uncaring. Not understanding. Self-righteous. Puffed up. In any way. That I know, trust me, I know, probably more than the rest of you, just as being a pastor, of the struggles that are going on in people's lives, I know that anxiety is real. I know that worry and fear is real. There's just this tension in my heart as I sat there and listened to the men just openly share their heart and their struggle. And thinking, but the Bible says this. You know? Why? So when you hear me this morning, trust me, I have spent a lot of time with the Lord and going, I won't say anything here that doesn't come from love for you. As one of your pastors who will stand before the Lord one day and give an account for your soul. So that Friday night was very heavy for me. It took me weeks to get over that. Some of that because I talked to a lot of men after that time. Fortunately, they heard things not near as dire as I did. So that helped me. Maybe <laughs> in some way. Maybe I was reading too much into it. I think it's because I have a real high hope for us as a body of believers. 
And there is an extremely high calling for us who claim to be followers of Christ. That we are to live in a certain way. And he hasn't, he hasn't lifted it so high that he has not supplied everything that we need to be able to do this. So I'm, I'm constantly bouncing back and forth. I understand this. I know the world is pressing in. I know huge medical struggles that come. Everyone in here has had some tremendous struggles. Suffering. We talked about that this morning in ABF. Again. But I also look and go, God says, God says this. Not only does he say it, He promises it. And you can look all through the whole course of history up into even your own life and go on, he has never, ever failed. And yet, we're anxious. Last week's message. This is, a, this is also something we try to work at going. It's why we have community groups. Why? So that we will apply. We will appropriate the scriptures, the message that we heard. Did you work on the seven things that he gave you in his message? Do you know that, that message last week you could take and apply that to your anxious situation? And it should radically change that. It should be extremely helpful. I'm not trying to say he's going to totally remove. God's attributes, God's sovereignty. We talked about it this morning. God's sovereign, wise and good. It's something we used to do here when we first started at a church over in the elementary school. Because of a study we were doing, God's sovereign, he's wise and good. over what you're worried about. He's good. He is good. He has always been good. He will always be good. He is sovereign. He's in control. He's faithful. His past, his his benefits that he's given to us, his character His commands, His presence. God Almighty Himself lives in you. He walks with you. He never, never, ever, He never leaves you. Nor forsake you. But but you don't understand. There's a part of me going, yeah, you're right. I don't understand. Because I want you to walk in this. This, these promises, this God, this all-powerful God. Who's in you. But this is really hard. I understand that. I know that. But he's still the same God in this situation. And guess what? This won't be the last situation that you have. There's more coming. So this flows from a heart from a pastor who longs for his people to know and love their God that demonstrates a power that the world has nothing of. That would watch you walk through a very difficult situation 
and be astounded by the way that you respond. And the character of Christ that comes out of you in these situations. And let me tell you, that Friday night, it was from every young man to the oldest man that was in this church. It was astounding to me. Thank you. I'm sorry that that's noticeable. There's a reason for this dry mouth. Some of it's nervousness, worry. It's not going to let up. The eldest man made the statement going, this is the toughest thing that we have ever been to been through in our marriage. And I thought, oh my. Work on these things. We can remember, he talked about last week, develop our memory. 1 Timothy 4, 7, have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourselves for godliness. Last week, we also talked about, this is work. This is, this is this, the joy and the, and the comfort and the happiness comes in Christ. Not in the stuff. Never will be. Those will be hard. But He's given you everything. He will give you everything. He will lavish His grace on you. There's nothing that you will not want. Psalm 23. Before we get there. Here's another one. Meditation. Do you remember the message on meditation? No? Anybody? Anybody? We had a message where he talked about meditation. Have you forgotten? I don't think so, hopefully. That'd be very discouraging as a pastor. Meditation. Did you apply meditation into your life? Did you do some things that would cause you to increase that activity in your life that will strengthen you as you think on the things of God? I meditated on mercy for weeks. It's still trying to continue to work that into my life. And these things are mercy. So what? So I can be merciful to others. Not just me receiving mercy. And if we do, it's like we talked about this morning. Comfort. You get comfort for God. Why? So you know how to give comfort to others. Meditation. Are you meditating? Think that has anything to do with your anxious? We'll move to the word of encouragement. That's your pastor's heart. I'm telling you, there's so much tension in trying to to say things that will encourage you and push you and stretch you and to long for this with everything that you have. That you will not be ruled by this. There is an answer to this. Psalm 23. One writer wrote this this little paragraph. It is the duty of a Christian to encourage themselves in the Lord their God. And we are here directed in this Psalm 23 to take that encouragement both from the relationship wherein he stands to us and from the experience we have had in his goodness according to that relationship. Psalm 23, we read it earlier. Can you quote it? I was glad I got this passage because this is a very familiar passage of Scripture. I think most of us can quote it. If not, get your Bible out. We're going to read it. Again, Sherry even asked me, we were making the schedule up. You know, we just used that passage of Scripture a couple weeks ago. I go, no, they forgot it already. (laughs) I'm getting, I hope not. Psalm 23, say it with me. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. Now, pause. <laughs> Sorry. That last thing that translation messed me all up. So, if you say a word different from somebody sitting next to you, it's just the grace that we give you for whatever your Bible happens to say. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. When you, amen. Amen and amen. Do you run to that passage when you feel anxious? When you start to worry, is it a go-to? Or maybe you have other passages, but I can highly recommend this one. The Lord God Almighty Himself, He is my shepherd. Is God your shepherd? Have you made Him your shepherd? Have you been saved? Has somebody shared the gospel with you and you have confessed and you have given your life to Christ? And He is now your shepherd. You are part of His fold. You're of the sheep. And He will shepherd you all the days of your life. There's so much here that you could go into. But my, is He, is he yours? Is he, is he my shepherd? Can you say that? That God is mine. If he was to shepherd nobody else in all the world, he's my shepherd. He's my shepherd. There's so much we talk about, about shepherding and, and the tenderness and the care and the provision and the planning and the walking. I shall not want. Really? We have a messed up world, if you hadn't noticed. It's extremely delicate. You kill power to stuff, we're toast. Food transporting shuts down. Famine comes, you will not want. You believe that? Hmm. Do you? It's what my Bible says. We'll have no want. He will take care of me. He will take care of you. In these struggles that become real can become real difficult. I understand. He will give you everything you need. He's promised. Spurgeon made a statement that says, I have all things in abound. Not because I have a good store of money in the bank. Not because I have skill and wit with which to win my bread, but because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He cares for you. He watches over you. He preserves you. He loves you more than anybody ever can or will. Nobody will love you better. Nobody will love you greater. He makes me lie down in green pastures. 
rich, green pastures, scriptures of truth. It's to eat, it's to devour, it's to intake. It is to meditate on. It's to eat it and to regurgitate it. And then chew it up and chew it again and put it in there. And it's rich. And as a sheep, you'll never be biting at the dirt. It's always good grass at the right space and the right level. And it's enriching. It is encouraging. It is powerful. It is life-changing. And He makes us lie down. Even when we don't know we need to go lay in this pasture and eat, Come here. You need to lie down. You anxious? Go lie down. Ask God to lay you down. And eat. And eat. And take it in. And remind yourself. Remember last week's message? Remember? Remember? It always amazed me. It's like we had this, this diligence. That we're to remember that he, he, he took the Israelites and he walked them through the sea on dry ground. And then after they all get the million and plus of them that walk through that on dry ground, then he swallows up the armies that were coming after him. And he says, what? Go put some stones down. So you'll remember. I'm going, Phew, really? How would you forget that? We do the same thing. My soul. I want you here. I don't want you over here. Remember. Good, sweet, full foods. Soul doctrines of the gospel. The promises of God. Then he takes us by these still, quiet waters. The influences and the graces of the blessed Holy Spirit that He's given to us. That's what He's working. That water comes in various ways. He cleanses us. He refreshes us. He washes us clean. He cherishes us. He comforts us. Oh, the Holy Spirit loves peace. You want peace? Man, walk in the Spirit. Call on the Holy Spirit. He's the one who brought you peace to begin with, right? We were enemies with God. What did He do? He came and He brought this God. Use the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit comes and He breathes on you and He causes you to come to life. And you cry out and say, yes, yes to you. I take Christ. And immediately, peace, reconciliation. You're no longer an enemy. You're now a child of the King. You're peace. You have no wrath that lies on you. Christ took all of that. That same peace is in us, that Holy Spirit. He loves peace. He loves to comfort us and bring peace. Draw near. Draw near. He will give you peace. The streams of the holy love of God. All the days of our life, a peacefulness of streams. You feel no peace? and you start to get anxious, and you recognize that, it should be like a smoke detector in your house. And usually when we hear them, it's just because the battery's going dead. But it is the most annoying thing in the, in the whole place. And trying to find one, you think, like, it's this one. Ha <laughs> ha, go take it down, and guess what? Like, are you kidding me? I emptied my whole house one day. I walked out in the garage and I wrapped them in a blanket and I put them in the front seat of my wife's car. I walked back in. Meep. There was one that got stuck in a drawer when we moved. For whatever reason. And it's going dead. I hope that we will work at you would hear that really quickly before the anxiety starts to overcome me. As soon as I feel that, I would run and I would remember, oh yeah, Psalms 23. 
Oh yeah, whatever passage of scripture that you, you, you just God uses in your life to strengthen you, remind you, encourage you in the gospel, in the promises of God. Oh no, 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 no. Don't worry. There's some things we've got to work through. We're still waiting on some answers. But I want, I want you to fix this. I want control. Run. As soon as you, you, you sense that rising up in you, that you would build a sensitivity in your life that you would just go, no, 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 no. I'm going to run. Run here. This is who I am. And this is who shepherds me. Oh, the God of this universe who has all power and all control of everything. And this is not happening by accident. He's got a purpose in this for me. Man, smoke detector. Beep. And that's just the battery going dead. There's really no trouble yet. He restores my soul. That's an amazing thing. Are you low on grace? We need of repentance. Run. Run to God. He is the restorer of your soul. And in the repentance, he will wash you clean. I don't think we believe that. If you can, if you can grow that into your life, even, it's just hard to believe, isn't it? It's almost, in some way, almost a cheapen grace. But you don't know. That was just, this is, this is a sin that I'm, I'm struggling with. Yeah, he's still forgiving. And he's still giving grace. And he still washes you with the blood of Christ. And he makes you whiter than snow. Go draw near to him. He's clean you. He, he will t- remove guilt. It's almost to do double jeopardy with God because he has cleansed you of that and then you're like, I'm still guilty for that. You've been washed clean. He restores your soul. Need of those things? Starting to be anxious? Pray. 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 God, restore my soul. Restore my strength. Restore the spirit within me. Don't let me go down this path. Help me. I'm going to think on this. I'm going to memorize this. I'm going to read this. Whatever it is, the word of God, that you're, 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 you're working those things into your life so that more and more I'm starting to recognize, huh, when these things happen, stop. These guys asked me what the title of my message was. And they know me well enough and they chat, ATP, whatever, you know. They come up with this light. What do you, what do you title your message like? Just stop. I said, no. I spent hours trying to make sure that's not what comes across. <laughs> he will help you stop. He will set your feet back on the firm foundation of himself. That's the sweetest, one of the sweetest gifts that we have. Oh, the shepherd of my soul who thoroughly renews my heart. He leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You know the paths of righteousness or paths of peace? We're pursuing righteousness, a lot of peace there, isn't there? Walk down the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. It's a path of peace, satisfaction. Matthew 5, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For what? For they shall be satisfied. There's a connection. We pursue those things and he will satisfy us. We're pursuing him. He is this. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You ever notice it's like you're still just walking? 
Death is not going to overwhelm you. It's like you're not going to really run into it, that he's in full control of it and he is walking. And you're walking into that, that even in what would be one of the darkest times that we could think of, he's just walking. He's not hurried. We're just walking with God as we go into death. We're just walking. We go through this tunnel of death. We're not walking in the valley of death. We're walking through the valley of death. I'm not going to stay here. I'm not going to get stuck here. I'm going to go into this, and if it is death, then I'm going to fall asleep. And you know what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Huh? Go ahead. This is... I, huh? Yeah. Wow, that really exciting. <laughs> We're home. My father. Christ. My brother. I see them. No sin. <laughs> Are you kidding? No bad thoughts. Just pure. Just, you can't. I don't, I, I just... Amazing. Amazing. But we are walking. And as we're walking with God, He walks us through that and, and, and we'll fall asleep here. And the next thing you know, your eyes are open and you're in heaven. And you see God Almighty Himself. And you start to join the chorus to singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Yeah. The struggle is for those who are left behind. But, it's going to be okay. I'm going to be there. Even if she goes first. Not afraid. It's just a shadow. Shadows don't hurt you. A dog with a shadow, he will not bite you. A sword, shadow of a sword, won't hurt you. I said, this is just a shadow. We had this discussion before, way back in ABF, and it's like, yeah, I'm not really afraid of death. It's just I'm afraid of the process or how it's going to happen. You don't have to be afraid of that. Even if you can think of the most excruciating thing, is God not with you? Did he just leave you? No. He never leaves you. I don't have to fear any of it. I don't have to fear the evil one. Even if the devil himself comes after me and it's like, I don't have to fear. He just tells me. Why? He's preparing a table for us to eat at. I'm going to sit down before he goes into this battle and fights it for me. We're going to eat. Really? Yes. But Kevin, you just, you just don't understand. I trust me, I know this is real. I want you to have victory over it. And if nothing else, I want you to grow in it. I think of, of all the times. We got very few young believers in here. If nothing else... At what point will this get better? Is there at least some growth in my life in moving in this direction? Because here are the promises. I will fear no evil. Why? What's he say? You got cheaters up there. What is it? Even though I walk through the valley, I fear no evil. What? That is the whole joy of the Christian life. It's Christ. 
It's Jesus. It's God. It's the Holy Spirit that He's giving you. Everything else, it's just what we're walking through. He's with me. Can you, can you just make that deeper, more and more of a reality? He's with me. <laughs> the creator of all things, he spoke it into order. He holds it by his power. He's with you. The tension is a pastor going, you see this, this is just one, this is just six verses out of this whole book that just goes on and on and on. Don't be anxious. Somebody's going to preach out of that text. Do not be anxious. Don't you know? I'll take care of you. I'm running out of time. Surely, goodness and mercy. I'm going to jump ahead. You can go back and, and spend time on this and meditate on this passage this week. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is a fact. Indisputable. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. They're like two sheepdogs. They just stay in behind them. And they just keep running in and guarding them and keeping them in this area. I got a dog that's supposed to be some kind of sheep dog. She's got a one-track mind, man. She likes to chase the ball. She's worn a path. She can't even vary from her path. She's worn a path that's how she comes back to the deck. There are two sheep dogs, and they're coming after you, and they're going, it's goodness and it's mercy. It's goodness and loving kindness all the days of your life. Goodness and loving kindness and mercy and mercy. And it's grace that's being lavished on you over and over and over and over. We just left out of Lamentations. New morning mercies, new every day. You do have to go get them. You do have to go get them. But even if you miss, you know what? He still gives you goodness, mercy, kindness. He never stops. He never stops. Even though when I walk away and I act like he's not really here. He's really not here. My actions almost say that. Like I'm living my life in such a way. And then when I get anxious and I spiral and I can't stop. Goodness supplies all our needs and mercy blots out our sins. All right. What do you see here? It's a relationship. It is a loving, tender relationship. with promises, and with a God, and a Savior, and a Holy Spirit that lives in you. That's the work. It's not in fixing the anxiety. God will fix that. If you work on this relationship, that's the focus. We talked a lot about suffering in, in ABF. And in the end, he said it. It's all in Christ. Christ says in John like 14 and 16, I give you my peace. He is peace. The world will give you no peace. I give you my peace. You want peace in the midst of the storm? You want to know how to go minister as we talked about this morning? Go, take peace. Go, I can take mercy. Go, I receive comfort from God. Why? So that I can give comfort to others in their suffering. I don't even have to know. I don't have to have experienced your suffering. We think that some way that's necessary. It might be helpful. He talked about doing testimonies or, or sharing 
you know, what God has done in your life. What has he done in your life? I started to put that in my message and it felt like it was being boastful. And I didn't know whether I could do this and say, hey, but this is boasting on God. This is boasting on Christ because I can, I can line you up. I've lived longer. That's the other thing that I had to remind myself of. What I've walked with God for a long time. And I haven't done it the best. But I have walked with Him. And He's done a lot of things in our lives. And there's been a lot of struggles. And He's been faithful on every situation we moved here. I had no job. You didn't move somewhere because some Yahoo with a long beard comes and says, Hey man, you want to go start a church? Sure. I'll leave somewhere I lived for 54 years. I ain't lived anywhere else. That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> Only God can work that in you. That's not of me. That is not exalting what it is. I long God did a work in my life back when I was about 23 or 24 years old. And it's like, look, man, I will do whatever you want me to do as best I can. And even with that, I didn't want to come to Ohio. Couldn't you just stay down in the south somewhere? I don't want my family separated. I don't like that my kids are in three different states. I would love to be with them. I have grandchildren here. I love being with them. It's limited. Guess what? God's going to give me all the time in the world with that in heaven. He's promised you promises and gifts for making sacrifices for Him. Walk with Him. Love Him. All these situations, we just look at these situations and say, hey, we need to fix this. I don't need to fix it. God will fix it. And you're going to go from this one to another one. As long as you keep living. We said this morning, this is, we're in a world, we're going to suffer. Back on the enemies. Do you have enemies? That's a problem. The good man has enemies. He would not be like his Lord if he had not enemies. If we were without enemies, we might fear that we were not friends of God. You know what our struggle is? Health issues and sinful decisions. We haven't even started suffering for the sake of the gospel. We got a long ways to go. God shook my life up on Friday night. My heart was broken. I want you to go with God with everything that you got. And He will work out all the circumstances. And all the situations are for a purpose so that I can walk through it with Him. That's the whole purpose. Bring me anything. I talked to one guy, and he, he, just this past week, he goes, okay, you're doing on anxious. like, well, well, what about this? What if I do this? And I'm going, well, I, that's happened in my life. Well, 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 what about this? You know, and it's like I got fired, and how am I going to provide for my family? I said, my dad fired me when my wife was eight months pregnant. We're still here, and we're pretty fat and sassy. <laughs> I can go on and on. I had a stroke here. I'm just getting back to work, and all of a sudden, you know, I get a phone call from great OSU on the phone. Hey, Mr. King, uh, we need you to come in and have a test. We think you have a brain tumor. It's left over from one of my tests from when I had a stroke. I'm like, is this how you guys do this? You call me on the phone while I'm driving down the road? I can go on and on and on about God's faithfulness and loving kindness and care. And I'm deeper in love with Him now because of every one of those things. And even if He hasn't taken me through that into where I am and He would have taken me out of here, great. My struggle is for those who are left here. Nobody wants that. All right, we'll close. 
a challenge for change. I hope that you see and understand the struggle I have. If you don't hear it here, and you're not challenged here, you're not going to probably hear it anywhere else unless you listen to somebody else who's preaching the gospel strongly. But you come here, and as a body of believers, you need to be taught truth. I hated that I had this tension of going, I'm going to say something, somebody will walk out of here offended. I don't want anything like that to happen here. I do want you to see a very high view of God and all the power that's available to you to us. And that's why I sat there on that Friday night and I'm going, really? Really? My men. The world's beating them up. It's crushing them. I'm not going to sit around for that. I want you to follow and love Jesus with everything that you've got. Believe God and His Word. Trust and obey Him. Walk with Him in His great love and tender care. As much as you can, I want you to set your heart today that in four weeks from now, I'm going to be different. If it's just one thing, just one thing, from, from a message, I will be different. I am, I am coming to you. Set yourself. Have you ever set yourself at a table or on a dock or whatever place you think is nice, quiet, serene? On the beach. And just in your your spiritual mind's eye, Rush has talked about this before, our spiritual imagination that Jesus Christ himself is sitting right here in front of me. And he looks at me and he goes, don't be anxious. I'm right here. Don't you know? You trust me with eternity? And you don't think I'm going to take care of this? Get intimate with your Lord and Savior. He's right here. Don't let it overwhelm you. Cry out to somebody else within the church. Come, walk with me. Remind me. We say a lot. We don't have the answers. Yeah, we do. I just need to get God back in your anxious situation because he's left. And you know better. And I'm going to do it in such a humble, tender way. Going, oh, come on, come on, come on. We know better. I know I'm not minimizing your hurt and your pain. Trust me, I am not. But I am calling you back going, he's still right here. He's still right here. And he's still working. He's still working. Set your heart today. Focus on relationship, relationship, relationship. Love God. Believe this. Trust this. We always hear, I don't don't get much time to I believe, but help my unbelief. That's in Scripture. The man stated it. And he's with a child that is full of a, a demon. From almost like birth. It's been a long time. And he knows, I believe. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe other things, but for some reason, it's just I'm not sure it's going to work. The more you walk with him and you trust him and he works in your life, your unbelief will go away. Do you think that man left 
with his child being healed and that his belief and his faith and his trust in God was not bigger and greater. Just keep walking. It doesn't have to be big things. It doesn't have to be a demon being cast out of your child. It's in the little things. And it's in the walking. And it's in the love of God. And no matter what comes my way, I'm just walking with God. Let's pray. Father, you know my struggle. Thank you for this time. I know it's a little long. They've endured a lot. But I know you got greater longings for us than I can even imagine. And we long for them ourselves and we hope to live in them. And so we know this is a process. This is not going to be fixed overnight. This is what I've lived 66 years. It's why I can say things differently. Because you have worked in my life. And I long for them to know that and they could do it earlier. And grow more and that you have saved us for good works so that we will go forth and that yes, we will have enemies and yet the gospel will go forth and people are going to be going to heaven and we'll sing with the nations one day. Help us. Strengthen us. You have. Help us to, to believe and apply these things. Help us to encourage one another in those things. Thank you so much. You're such a great God. You never, in all of the, the, the struggles that we have, you never, you never come at us. You never point your finger. You never berate us. You just lovingly, kindly just keep drawing us in. You take that staff and you just pull us in closer and closer. We love you. You're amazing. If there's somebody here today that doesn't know you, that they would cry out and ask for help so that they could hear the gospel and be saved. In Jesus' name I'm praying. Amen.